Hi there, join me today in this woodland as I go in search of mushrooms. I've come into this woodland this morning with just my 105mm prime lens, nothing else, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge um, looking for things to photograph, but this is a macro lens, so it will allow me to get very close to um, objects on the floor, particularly I'm looking for fungi and mushrooms. So it's ideal conditions for photographing fungi because it's early in the morning, the sun hasn't come up yet, so anything that's grown overnight will not have been trampled by animals or eaten by insects. All that's left now is to go and see what we can find and I know that I'm really going to enjoy my photography. I didn't have to go very far at all from where I filmed my introduction to find my first fungi. Um, it's quite a nice um, shape and there's a couple of little ones underneath so what i've done to make sure i can get this is i've put the camera right on the forest floor not even on a tripod i made sure it was stable by using one of my batteries just to lift the lens up just to um, make it so it was pointing straight at the fungi and you might be able to tell that i've cleared the, um, the area around it just move the leaves and bits of twigs away from the, the main subject just so it wasn't too distracting. Now I have also focus stacked this image and I'll probably be focus stacking every image that I take this morning and basically what that means is I put the camera in manual focus and then twist the focus ring to focus on every single part of the mushroom from the front all the way through to the back so I might end up with 10 to 20 different shots but each shot will have a different point of the mushroom in focus and then when I get back in the computer I will combine all of those together to make one shot. Just here there's a tree stump that's got lots of fungi growing on the side of it and so it, it's important to try and pick out a few individual samples rather than trying to take a photograph of the whole thing. Now there's a group of three just here that I've isolated and because I've got a very shallow depth of field what's happened is the background's been thrown completely out of focus and I've just done a focus stack on these three um, specimens just here to take a photograph of that. This single tree stump has proved to be really productive. Not only did I get those first three that I've just talked about, I got some on the side pointing in the opposite direction. And then there's a really interesting bit of fungi on the top of this tree stump that I've done another focus stack of pointing straight down from above. So the camera's set up like this, but it's just such an interesting pattern. It's almost like a flower. So just here on this dead tree trunk is some really interesting fungus. The inside is brown but the outside is white um, so it makes for quite a striking image and I might even try it in mono um, but I'll say how that goes. But before I've taken this shot what I've done is I've looked through the, the viewfinder to see if there's anything distracting. So there are some um, really vivid yellow leaves on the floor that just become distracting. So I've moved those out of the way so there's nothing that is taking your eye away from the main subject. Then I've twisted the camera so I've put the tree trunk and the fungi on a diagonal because I just think it's a more pleasing composition. So thinking about all of this while you're in location can make the shot much better.
I've just come across this tree stump here and this particular bit of fungi just here was covered with leaves and it gave me an idea of something to try because there's loads of leaves on the floor of all different colours and so I thought I would try something a little bit different. Now it might not be to everybody's liking um, because it's a little bit contrived but what I did is I picked out a yellow leaf and a brown leaf and I've arranged them on the top in a ordered fashion um, just to show off the colors of the leaves and the fungi it's just something a little bit different and if you don't try and be creative you never know what you might be able to do and so this yes is contrived but i still quite like it So this particular bit of wood has got some interesting mushrooms on it, but it was over there. So what I've done is I've carefully lifted it onto this tree trunk here so I can get more on the level of the mushrooms. Now what I'll do when I finish, I'll put it back where I found it. So I've just had a chat with a couple of dog walkers who have told me they've seen some flyer garricks. Now for those who don't know, they're the vivid red with white spots on the top, the typical mushroom that you see in cartoons. Um, now unfortunately they couldn't remember where they've seen them and this is quite a large wood so the chances of me actually stumbling across them are very few and far between. But I'm going to have a little wander around still, I've got a little bit more time before I need to go so who knows what I might find. This really just remind me of the extract from The Lord of the Rings where the hobbits are on a shortcut to mushrooms because there are mushrooms everywhere and this is a really good find. This tree stump just here has fallen down and there's some different types of fungi on the top. Um, the difficulty is trying to isolate any of them because they're in such huge clumps. What you want to try and do with any photography is to make it as simple as possible. So I've managed to find a single uh, mushroom just here and I've isolated it um, from the background by having a very shallow depth of field and I may even use this one as my thumbnail. Quite often when I'm taking photographs for YouTube videos, I will take them in landscape orientation just because they fit better on the screen. But that's not always the best orientation to get the most of the subject. In this particular version just here, I'm taking a photograph of a mushroom that works better in portrait orientation. So don't stick to one particular format, change the way that you orientate your camera to best suit the subject that you are photographing. This particular tree trunk here that's fallen over is absolutely ideal for taking photographs of mushrooms because it's really easy to get on a level with them. Now that's really important to make them look um, their best. If you're taking photographs from standing, looking down on the mushrooms, you're just going to get photographs from the top. What you really want to try and do is get to ground level, which is why I put the camera on the floor earlier on. But for this particular um, situation, you don't even need to bend down to get right on a level with the mushroom and it makes them look much more effective photographs. So I've just had a really happy accident. I was setting up this shot here to photograph this lone mushroom on this uh, tree stump. And as I aimed the camera at it, the background had a um, bokeh spot, a really bright spot from the tree canopy in the background um, that framed the mushroom almost like it was backlit by the sun. Um, now it's not, it's just a out of focus blob of um, sky coming through the canopy behind but it was really round right behind the mushroom and so I've used that. Now it took a little bit of 
aligning uh, the camera to get it up and down to get it perfectly behind the mushroom but hopefully when I get that back in the computer that could look quite interesting Well that's it for this video, I didn't find those fly agarics unfortunately, but I did have a really great morning trying out something different because this is not my normal style and so it just forces you to think a little bit more creatively. I've used some focus stacking techniques, some macro work and just open my mind to some different possibilities and when you do that that will transfer over into your normal style of photography so it's worth trying something that's slightly out of your comfort zone if you have enjoyed this video let me know down below in the comments and if you want to see any more of my photographs i've started using vero that's at the Oakton photography my instagram account is still available so there's lots of photographs there and there's links for that down below in the description. Now, if you want to support the channel and help me make future content like this, you can also visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer. There's lots of new designs, so go and check that out. And there's also a link for that down below. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell notifications, because that really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, you can always go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.